In the name of Allah Almighty, the Beneficent, the Merciful, welcome to PH101 Lab. And our today's experiment is uh, experiment number six, rotational dynamics. So, first of all, what is rotational dynamics? So, actually, uh, dynamics is the branch of physics which deals with the motion of objects when a force is applied on that object. So, so dynamics is actually the branch of mechanics which deals with the motion of objects under the influence of force. Let's say I have a block of mass m and I applied certain force in this direction. So it will move as a result of this applied force and it will move with some acceleration a. So this is actually uh, the part of mechanics and if we are studying this force under the uh, studying this system under the influence of force so it will be the part of dynamics. Now the word rotational so why rotational? Now if the system is rotating let's say if the system is not moving in a straight path or in a rectilinear path it is rotating about a fixed point then ro this system will be studied in rotational dynamics. It, it is the case of rotational dynamics. The study of rotational motion of the objects under the influence of force we can say that it is the rotational dynamics. If the object is rotating about a fixed point so definitely some torque will be there to rotate the object about a fixed point. So let's take an example of a disc. Let's say this is a disc and this disc is let's say rotating about a fixed point. Just like we can take the example of CD player. So there we have a disc and the disc is rotating about a fixed point. So this disc is rotating let's say in this anti-clockwise direction like this. So the, it's having some velocity and if the disc is rotating so we will call the velocity here to be the angular velocity. So in this case if this is the center of mass of the disc so the center of mass of the disc C dot M will be right in the middle of this disc. And what happens that this disc is rotating about this fixed axis. So we can say that the center, the center of mass of this system is at rest. Is it? The center of mass of this system is at rest. Or we can say that the velocity of the center of mass of this system is equal to zero because the disc is rotating about a fixed axis. So if the disc is rotating about a fixed axis, the center of mass or the axis passes through the center of mass. So the center of mass is at rest but the disc is rotating due to, due to some force or we can say that a torque is uh, uh, responsible, a torque is responsible to move or to rotate this disc about this fixed point. So this is actually the case of rotational dynamics and our experiment is about to study the angular velocity. So if we are talking about the angular velocity definitely there will be some rotation involved. Now what is angular velocity? Let's say we can we take the example of this disc. Let's say this disc is rotating about a fixed point. This is let's say the axis of rotation. It is rotating in this direction, in the anti-clockwise direction. So let's say if the disc start at point A, let's say I mark a point A. I mark this disc with, uh, with a dot, let's say. If the disc starts at point A and let's say it completes one revolution. So if it starts at A and it comes back to uh, at this point and it comes back towards point A. So it will be one revolution. This will be one revolution. So it means that one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. One revolution will be 2 pi radians. So what will be the angular velocity in this case? So angular velocity is a vector quantity omega. So omega is equal to theta by t where theta is the angular displacement. So let's say if, the, if, it's, if it moves from A and comes back towards A. So the angular displacement in this case because uh, if the disc is rotating this point will after some time this point will be here then it will be here then it will come back towards A and it will complete one revolution. So this theta will be actually equal to one revolution and how much time is taken by the disc to complete one revolution. Let's say this is one second. Let's take the example of for the sake of simplicity. So our angular velocity will be equal to one revolution per second and one revolution 
is equal to 2 pi radians. One revolution is 2 pi. So this is we can say that 2 pi by t. So this is actually the angular velocity. This is actually the radian per second. The units are the radian per second. So omega is equal to theta by t. This is the angular velocity. So if the disc is rotating, it starts at point A and it, it completes one revolution, then it will be 2 pi. If it completes two revolution, this will be 4 pi. If it completes three revolution, it will be 6 pi by t. And how much time is taken to complete the these revolutions is t. t. So simply this is the uh, vector quantity and this is the angular velocity. Now, now in the pre, so we are discussing the prerequisites. Now one more thing is we know that theta is equal to for one revolution theta is equal to 2 pi radian. Let's say if it completes two revolutions then it will be 2 into 2 pi. It will give 4 pi radian. Then for three revolutions it will be 6 pi radian. So for n number of revolutions I can write this theta to be theta is equal to 2 n pi radian or I can rewrite it to be 2 pi n radian. So we will be using these relations that's why I am deriving this we will be using, using this relation theta 2 pi n is the number of revolutions n is the number of revolutions as you can see in the table as well number of revolutions and 2 pi represents one revolution so if n is 1 this is one revolution if n is 2 this is 4 pi so it's two, it represents two revolutions and similarly theta is related is 2 pi n radian. So we know that we can use theta is equal to 2 pi n radian and one relation is omega is equal to 2 pi by t. Now let's move towards our uh, experiment. So the purpose of our experiment is to study the angular velocity and the angular velocity we are having some disks. In this case we are having some disks. So the apparatus required for this experiment is the rotational dynamics unit as you can see uh, we will need two, uh, three discs actually. One is the aluminium disc and two will be the, two discs will be the steel discs. Now we will need a stopwatch, the air compressor and the graph paper to graph the plot between the angular velocity and versus time at the end. So this is the apparatus and the study, uh, the purpose of this experiment is very simple. We are studying actually the angular velocity of uh, discs. So one is the aluminium disc uh, and the other one is the uh, steel disc. So both have the same radii. Keep in mind, both have both have same radii. Means the radius of the aluminium and the steel discs are same, but the masses are definitely different because the density is different. So as you can see, that this is actually the rotational dynamics apparatus, and using this apparatus, we will be finding the rotational we will be finding the angular velocity and how to do it let's understand this apparatus first so this is actually our apparatus rotational dynamics apparatus there are three discs as you can see the bottom we call this the base plate so actually this is not a disc you can say that it's a base plate and it's fixed you cannot move it or rotate it simply inside uh, on this base plate we have a spindle so we have like a spindle and the disc are having hole in the middle. So we can keep the disc here inside this spindle. So we can keep the discs inside this spindle. Now the spindle contains here we have a hole and around the spindle we are having some holes. So these holes are for actually for when the ear from the air compressor goes into this tube, the air goes into the spindle and comes out of these holes. And this is this air is responsible to move these discs simply. So actually the spindle, this is actually the spindle right in the middle of these discs. So the spindle is we call this the spindle. The spindle is having holes. Now there are two discs. One is the upper disc, the top one, and the bottom one is the lower disc. So keep in mind. The this the unit will always operate the you this unit will always operate on two discs. So we will not be using single disc. We will be using two discs if we are using or we if you are performing this experiment. We it may be one steel disc and one aluminium disc, or it may be 
or it may be or it may be both steel discs so the bottom disc is always the uh, steel disc keep in mind the bottom disc we keep the bottom discs to be the steel disc always so there are three discs actually one is two are the steel discs having the same radii and uh, and one is the aluminum disc so the first one is the upper disc we call it the upper disc or the top disc this one is the lower disc the, these discs can rotate about this spindle now here we have a display screen digital display screens tells us about the counts per second so what are actually the counts per second so let me show you so actually we are having this i have this aluminum disc and this one is the steel disc as you can see so on this disc you can see that there are black and white bars if you can you can clearly see that there are black and white bars so keep in mind we have this you can see the black dots so these are actually the optical readers so the optical readers actually reads these bar so when this there will be a light there will be a light indicator so these are the optical readers so whenever the optical readers reads these black bars so the light will turn on and as it reads the white bar the light will goes off so keep in mind whenever because the disc is rotating and the optical reader they are having white and black bars so when the black bar uh, the optical read, reader reads the black bar so the light will turn on and as it reads the white bar the optical re the, the light will turn off so this is the, this is actually the indicator now there are actually 100 200 bars on this disc so keep in mind we are having n is equal to 200 bars you can say so don't confuse this n and this n we are we will be discussing it shortly so i am representing this n to be 200 bars because there are 200 black strips or 200 black bars on this disc so the function is very simple first of all we will turn on the air compressor you have to keep in mind that these discs are actually rotating against each other they can rotate against each other or they can spin against each other they can spin together or they can spin independently keep in mind they can spin independently they can spin dependently means one disc can spin in one direction and the other disc can spin in the opposite direction similarly there are certain holes as you can see i am calling these holes to be the valve pin storage positions so the first two holes are actually the valve pin storage position and the bottom one is the bottom disc valve so actually this air tube passes under these holes now we have two pins valve pins as you can see we have like this this we have a valve pin now here we have a switch when you flip the switch to the upper mode so it means that the first or the top disc is monitored by the optical reader and the display screen will tell us about the counts per second but so actually it reads the count the number of black bars as it passes across this optical reader so if the black bar is passing and the optical reader is detecting the black bars so counts per second means that the number of black bars detected by the optical reader per second so it actually means counts per second because it is counting how many bars are moving in one second so the display screen if when you switch the upper switch it to the upper mode so before doing this experiment we have to first turn on the air compressor as the air moves inside this tube so this air is actually providing the necessary force or the torque to rotate these discs before doing these things first we will turn on the air compressor and one more thing to keep in mind is because the, uh, these discs are placed on one another so if there will be dust then there will be frictional forces involved and the, the results will be the and the results will not be that much accurate so you should not be rotating this disc against each other when the air compressor is not turned on because when the air compressor is in the off state these discs are having enough friction between them so if you will rotate these discs against each other then definitely they will create some scratches against each other so the scratches will be responsible to increase the friction of these discs because when the air flows in the friction between the disc reduces on the top of the spindle we can insert a pin a valve pin 
So there are actually two valve pins. These valve pins can either be inserted in the middle of the disc or there are three holes as you can see one is the bottom disc valve and the other one is the valve pin position. These two holes are for the valve pin positions and this bottom disc valve is for the bottom disc position. So these holes having some functions. So if you will there are actually two valve pins. So if this is our valve pin, let us say I am keeping one valve pin in the middle of this disc and one valve pin in these holes. If we have to study the rotational motion of the first disc, we will move this or flip this switch to the upper mode. So the optical reader will monitor the first disc, the top disc only. And if it you flip it to the lower mode, the optical reader will monitor the bottom disc and will tell us the number of counts per second for the bottom disc. So if it is in the upper mode, the, um, this display screen will tell us the count per second, the number of black bars per second for the top disc. So this is very simple. Now when the air compressor is turned on, actually the air required for this experiment is 9, 9 psi. But because the pressure may vary depending on the type of the air compressor, so you should always be performing this experiment for constant pressure. So if you are not using the 9 psi value for the pressure, you can use any value let us say not too high pressure. Keep in mind the pressure should not be too high to disturb the valve, uh, to disturb these tubes. So you should always be performing this experiment for constant pressure and for moderate pressure, not too high and not too low because the pressure should be always such that the discs are able to rotate freely. If the discs are not freely rotating, it means that when you turn on the air compressor and disturb the first disc slightly by your finger and if it is rotating freely it means that the air pressure is enough to provide the necessary force keep in mind now the purpose of these valve these are the valve disc holes three holes the first two are the valve main storage positions and the bottom is the actually the bottom disc valve this is the what what are these holes for these two discs can spin dependently and independently and it depends on the position of this valve pin. So if this valve pin is in the, let us say these are the holes, the first two are the storage positions and the bottom one is the bottom disc position. So if our valve pin, this is our valve pin, if this valve pin is in the store, one is inserted here. Let us say I have inserted this valve pin in this hole in the storage position. For the lower disc we are having this middle one is for the lower disc and this upper one is for the top disc. So these are, there are two storage positions for the, for the first and for the second disc. So if I will be performing this experiment I will have to keep the one of the valve pin in this storage position in the middle one. One valve pin will be in the middle of this hole right here and the other pin will be in the middle of the spindle keep in mind. So there are actually two pins. The first pin will be in the storage position in the middle and the other pin will be in right in the spindle. So there are two pins and so we will keep our second valve pin. So we will keep our second valve pin in the storage position which is the, in the middle hole. So in between the holes. So if, it, if we keep this valve pin in the bottom in the storage position in the middle and one in the and one in the spindle. So what will happen? It means that the bottom disc the bottom disc will not rotate and just the upper disc will rotate. This is for the case when one is in the spindle, one pin is in the spindle and one is in the storage position in the middle. So what will happen? It means that the bottom disc will not rotate and just the upper disc will rotate. So if we are studying for the aluminium disc, initially we are studying the angular velocity for the aluminium disc. We only want the upper disc to be in motion. So we will keep the valve pin to be in the middle. So it means that the top, the bottom disc will not rotate and the upper disc will move freely. This is what these holes are for. This is the purpose of these holes and the valve pins.
and the valve pins. And the purpose of this middle pin is because the ear is going inside the spindle. It is necessary, it is, it is important to keep one of the valve pin in the disc. So when you will keep the pin in here, the ear will be uniformly distributed through these holes. And this what and this ear will provide the force for to these discs to rotate. If I, I move this spindle, I move this valve pin to the bottom disc, which is not the requirement for our case. But let's say if I move this valve pin to the bottom disc, what will happen after moving this to the bottom valve position, to the bottom hole? If I rotate the upper disc, the lower disc will also start rotating in the same direction. Keep in mind. So the bottom position is for the case when you will disturb the first disc, it will disturb the second disc as well. And the middle, the storage position is for the case that the lower disc will not rotate and the upper disc will move freely above this disc. So let me repeat this in order to understand this, the procedure and how to perform this experiment. So the first thing you have to do is to turn on air compressor, we have to turn on the air compressor. The pressure should be fixed and moderate, keep in mind, not too high and not too low. The other thing is, the other thing, we will check the level of this. So you will have, you will, you will, you can use the bubble level to check the level of this unit to check the level whether it is placed horizontally. So we have to keep it horizontal. Now the third thing is to turn on the this supply. So if you want to turn this on, there will be a power supply. Turn the power supply on. The digital display will turn on simply. Now the next thing you have to do is to is to set up this equipment. And how to do it? Let's say I am first I, I want to measure the angular velocity for the aluminium disc first. So what I have to do, I will first place the steel disc, then the aluminium disc and then I will insert the valve pin in the middle of the spindle as you can see. And the next valve pin be, will be in the storage position, the hole in the middle. Keep. You will also need a stopwatch, keep in mind. So you will need a stopwatch, let me show you. So you will need a stopwatch. Now the third part is you will rotate this like slightly by your finger. And keep in mind that this displays this optical readers only reads between 100 and 700 hertz. Any reading above or below this value will be not reliable. Keep in mind any value above or below this value will not be reliable. Uh, you will not be rotating this this too fast because if you are doing it, it means that if it is crossing the value above 700 if it if the digital display screen measures the value to be let's say 800 hertz or 800 counts per second because this is the frequency counts per second is the frequency so you should always so gently rotate the disc with your finger so we will place a tape a paper tape here on the top of the disc so this is actually for the measuring the number of revolutions of this disc so how to do it First, you will keep, you will place a tape here on the top of the disc, right in front uh, of the uh, optical reader, parallel to the optical reader. Now, you will gently rotate it by your finger. So, rotate the upper disc. I will write it here. Number fourth point is rotate the upper disc, disc slightly or gently by your finger and keep in mind the value should not cross 100 it should not be below 100 and it should not be above 700 so it should be between let's say 200 count per second 300 count per second so this is a reliable value you can uh, keep it for your measurement you will rotate the disc with your finger and you will turn on the stopwatch simultaneously now after two seconds you will note the reading so this will be actually let's say it counts to be the 240 counts per second. This will be your RI. RI is the initial reading. It actually tells the value which is displayed on this digital display screen. Now keep in mind, after the initial reading, we are doing this experiment, let's say for 10 revolutions. So this N is for, keep in mind, 
the, the value of n in this table is actually telling us the number of revolution and one n is this one. So this one n, this n is for the number of bars or you can use the small n not to confuse the capital N and the N. So the small N is actually the number of black bars on the disk and the capital N is the number of revolutions. So you will turn on the stopwatch as, the, as you rotate the disk, you will turn on the stopwatch. So now definitely this tape is for to measure the number of revolutions. So let's say I am doing it for 10 revolutions. So you will count the number of revolutions. As it starts at this point and it comes back to this point, this will be one revolution. 2 revolution, 3 revolution, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, 8. As it, as it completes 10 revolution, you will stop the stopwatch. And you will note the value, you will note the value of time. Let's say this is 8.35 seconds, let's say. And as you turn off the stopwatch, and as you stop the stopwatch, the count, the digital display screen will again show you some value in counts per second. This will be actually your final reading. Let's say this will be one nine. Let's say this is 200 counts per second. Let's say this is 200 counts per second. Now theta can be easily calculated. Theta is equal to as we discussed. Theta is equal to 2 pi n. We have derived this relation 2 pi n radian. So theta is equal to 2 pi n is the number of revolution is 10. 10 radian. So this means that theta is equal to 20 pi radian or we can say that theta is equal to 20 pi is 62.83 radian. So theta will be 62.83 radian, 62.83 radian. So for each case if the number of revolutions are 10, you will have to do it for the, for all the trials. Now the value of R average, now keep in mind, now this is very important. The angular velocity and one is the R average. R average is actually the average of the initial reading of the display screen and the final uh, reading of the display screen. So if Ri plus Rf divided by 2 will give you the R average value. This is actually the frequency. It is in counts per second. Keep in mind, it is in counts per second. So the display screen will tell you the number of uh, uh, counts per second, the number of black bars per second. So R average, we can calculate it by taking the average of these two values, we will get the R average, R average, sorry. So, you will note that value down here. Now, R average is actually equal to this relation. This omega is actually average angular velocity. So, average angular velocity will be equal to theta in radians divided by, so we have calculated the theta and divided by the time, T or the capital C, T, let's say, you can use the capital T if you want to, theta by T. So, let's say our value is 62.83 radians divided by time. So, the time is 8.35 seconds. So, we will get the average value of the angular velocity in radian per second. You will note that value here in radian per second. Let's say it is 8.55 radian, let's say sorry this one, this is 8.55 radian per second and let's say this value was something, uh, let's say this value was 235 counts per second, RF, RF is the average of the initial and the final reading of the display screen. Now the next thing is to calculate K, so keep in mind, keep in mind that the actually k is a constant and k is actually telling us the radians per bar. k is actually telling us the radians per bar. How many radians per bar are there? So this is actually the k and it is equal to, keep in mind, the value of k is equal to, it is related as k r average is equal to omega average. It is related to the average reading of the display screen and to the average angular velocity like this. So from here the value of k is equal to omega average divided by r a v g, r average. So what will happen? r average u v uh, omega average you have calculated it is 8.55 radians per second and r average is 235 counts per second. 
so what you will have to do the units will cancel out second second will cancel out and we will get the red the units will be let's say the the value of the omega average will be radian per second and the value of the r average will be from that table you will note it down let's say this is 235 counts per second and let's say this is 8.53 radian per second so second second will cancels out and we will get a value of k for this experiment for aluminium you will get the value to be 0.033 for all the cases so you will have to also calculate the value of k when you will perform this experiment you will get the same value with a little fluctuation in the reading you will get the value to be 0.03 or 38 simply so actually this value is radian we are left with radian per count or count means one bar so i can say that count is actually representing one bar so i can say that radian per count or i can say it is equal to radian per bar so that's why i have written uh, written the value of k and its units will be radian per bar so you will note the value and in the first case you should get a value of 0.033 similarly you will get a value of 0. let's say for the second case you get a value to be 0.032 0.031 let's say you are getting the value of k now again you will have to repeat this experiment you will have to repeat this experiment here we will have a gas well the air the air well here we will have a air well so using the air well you can turn off and on the air flow so if you will turn the valve off the air flow inside will the air flow will be stop the air flow inside will stop and the display screen is updated every 2 seconds so please uh, so please to if uh, you are performing this experiment you should wait for, uh, for at least 2 seconds and then you will have to note the value here so let's say for the second case i am getting the value to be 235 counts per second for the so let's say the first disc completes 10 revolutions in let's say 7 let's say in 9.35 seconds 9.35 seconds and as i turn off the you have to you have to note these three values simultaneously keep in mind so you will be doing it very shortly and very accurately so when you will turn off the when you will stop this uh, the timer when you will stop the timer you will note the value of the again you will note the value of the display screen so let's say this gives you the value to be 193 counts per second this gives the value of 193 counts per second theta will be uh, constant because the number of revolutions is 10 and theta is equal to 2 pi n so there is no uh, value of t so we are there is no uh, time in this equation so we will get a constant value for the theta so if this is for 10 revolution keep in mind then we will get a constant value for the theta now the r average can be easily calculated as we have discussed this is actually the average of the final in the initial reading so we will get a values of summing these two values these two values and dividing by 2 we will get the r average so let's say the r average is now 230 the values should be decrease keep in mind omega average can easily be calculated omega average can be calculated again by uh, theta by t as we have written uh, written the value of the uh, omega average is theta by t so theta we are here we have the value of theta from here 62.83 radians and we will divide this here divide this by time 9.35 second we will get the value of the omega average let's say this value is 8.31 radian per second again we know the relation between the k r average and the omega average so from here we can easily calculate the value of k and it will be the units will cancel out we have discussed it and we will get the value of k to be again 0.03 or it may there may be a little error in this value at the end we will also find the error in the value of k and i will tell you how to do it so this is actually for the second case you will uh, do it the find the value of k so we have calculated the angular velocity of the upper disc now do it for the third case for the fourth fifth sixth you will have to take several readings and then you will get you will have you will get a series of values for the rf ri n theta r average omega average n k so we will fill this table 
Now for the second table, what you have to do? The experiment is the same, the procedure is the same. What you have to do? You will pull this spindle out, you will pull this well pin out and you will remove the upper disc. Now, I, I told you that the lower disc is always the steel disc. So, there are actually two steel discs. Now, the, the, over disc, the lower disc will always be the steel disc. So, when we will be demonstrating it practically, you will understand it better. But for the Turian calculations part, let us discuss it shortly. Now, you will remove the aluminum disc and then you will keep the steel disc instead of the aluminum disc. So, remove the aluminum disc and keep the steel disc. Now, move this flip switch to the upper position. Now, again the procedure is the same, but now the optical reader is monitoring the steel disc. In the first case, it was monitoring the aluminum disc. In the second case, because we have changed the disc, the upper disc, now it is monitoring the steel disc and definitely the steel disc is more massive, so the, the results will vary, definitely the results will vary. And you have to repeat these similar steps for the steel disc. So, this was actually the rotational dynamics apparatus and this was the way how to perform this experiment. Now, one more thing is, you can also calculate the value of k. One value is to calculate it from the experiment. So, we can do it from the experiment. And the other thing which is the requirement for this experiment, keep in mind, you should always have to, you should also calculate the value of k. You should also calculate the value of k. One is through this relation. One is through this relation. So, one is through this relation and one more thing is, k is actually equal to 2 pi by l n. So, if this is 2 pi divided by n is 200 bars. So, this will be radian per bar and you will get the value of k. This will be the theoretical value. Keep in mind. This will be the, this is the experimental. You can say this is the experimental value of the k and this is actually the theoretical this is actually the theoretical and then we will have to calculate the percentage difference. Now, if you calculate this value, this value will turn, this value will comes out to be, this value will comes out to be, this value will comes out to be 0 0.03 14. So, this is actually the theoretical value of k and this was actually the experimental value of k. Now, at the end you will have to calculate the percentage difference in the value of k and how to do it? Now, we know that we have a series of k values. So, first you will calculate the average of the k. So, you will sum all these values. Let us say these are, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let us say there are 6 k values. So, you will sum the 6 all these values and divide it by 6, you will get the k average. So, you will have to calculate the k average from here and this will be your experimental value and one value is actually the theoretical value. So, the percentage difference in k is equal to the absolute of the theoretical value, theoretical value, theoretical value of k minus the average experimental value of k, which is k average. You will sum all the values of the k average. So, you will sum all the values of the k and divide it by the number of values and then divide it by the again theoretical value of k. So, you will get the percentage difference and it should be again less than or it should be again less than 5 percent at least or at least for this experiment, if it is less than 2 percent, it would be better. If it is less than 2 percent, it would be better for this case. Experiment seems to be very difficult uh, in the theories and calculations part, but when I will be demonstrating it practically, you will come to know that it is very easy to do it practically, but when we will demonstrate it experimentally, you will definitely understand it very well. So, this was all about our today's experiment. Now, at the end, you will plot a graph. And the graph will be between the angular velocity, the graph will be between the angular velocity and the time. Angular velocity 
time graph. We will have to find the, we will have to plot the angular velocity time graph. How to do it? On the y axis, we are having the average velocity values, average velocity in radian per second, definitely. And on this axis, by choosing the suitable scale, we are having the values of time. Let's say we have 6, 7 seconds, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Here we have 4, 8, 12, 16. Now, the, the angular velocity value is decreasing. The average angular velocity is decreasing. So, then you will have to plot a graph between the average velocity and the time. So, as you can see that the value of the average velocity decreases with increasing time. The time is increasing. For the second case, we are having 9.35 seconds and the average velocity is now 8.31. So, so, when you will get a series of values, you will come to know that the value of the average velocity decreases uh, and the time of revolution increases. So, if you are performing this experiment in the first go, keep in mind, if you are performing this experiment in the first go, you disturb the upper disk lightly by your finger and you have completed the first trial and then you have also completed the second trial, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So, keep in mind, when you rotate this list slightly by your finger, so definitely it will move, again. initially it will move a little faster and then it will move a little slower. So, its angular velocity will decrease, definitely its angular velocity will decrease because you have disturbed it with your finger. So, the angular dis the velocity of the disk will not be constant. For the first trial you have completed and the disk is continuously moving, keep in mind. So, when you will do it for the second case, you will get a... So, when you will do it for the second case, the value of the average velocity decreases. For the third case, the value of the average velocity decreases and definitely if the average velocity decreases, the time required to complete 10 revolution will increase, the time will increase. If the speed is of the, uh, the angular velocity is decreasing, so more time is taken by this disk to complete 10 revolutions, so the time will increase. So if this is the situation, you will get a graph like this. So definitely it is not a constant angular acceleration. This is not a constant angular acceleration, this is a decreasing acceleration. This is actually a decreasing angular acceleration and angular acceleration is omega by t. So, the slope of this curve will give you the, if you will calculate the slope of this curve, you will come to know that the, the slope of the curve is actually the angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is the time rate of change of the angular velocity. So, keep in mind, when you will do it for the first case, you will do it, so you will disturb the disk by your finger and you have noted these values down. Now, do it quickly for the second case, for the third, for the fourth, for the fifth, without turning off the air wheel. Do it for the second, third, fourth, fifth. Re measure some values of k, fill this table. So, you will come to know that when you will measure the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth value, the value of the average velocity decreases with time. And the time required to complete 10 revolutions increases because if the velocity decreases, the time taken to complete 10 revolution will definitely increase and you will get a graph like this. So, you will have to plot a graph for the aluminium and for the steel disc as well. So, this was all about our today's experiment, the rotational dynamics and this was the rotational dynamics apparatus and the purpose was to study the uh, angular velocity of the aluminium disc and the steel disc. So, so, this was all about our today's experiment, the rotational dynamics. It, we will practically demonstrate it in the second part. So, Thank you so very much for watching the lecture.